Welcome everyone to the January 2020 meeting, uh, community meeting of the ITB2 Transmart Foundation. I'd like to welcome you all. Thanks for finding us at our new location uh, as we're using Zoom for our uh, webcasting now. If you haven't uh, done so, there's a, a button on our website that will add uh, the entire year's events uh, for of community meetings each month. We hold these meetings on the third Tuesday, third uh, Tuesday of every month at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, the button works and we'll add the uh, sessions to your calendar. These recessions are being recorded and you'll be able to find the recording on both our, trans, our ITB2 Transmart uh, YouTube channel as well as on our website uh, along with the slide deck. We are uh, going, going to continue using the Mentimeter survey tool uh, where we'll ask some questions and uh, it'll allow you to post questions to us um, at the end of the presentation uh, in the session. Uh, and so uh, if, you, um, if you scan that, bar, that, that QR code on the screen with your telephone, you will get to the, uh, the questions uh, on your phone or on your computer, uh, on your tablet. Uh, and, or you can go to the, to the website menti.com and type in this code. And if you do, you'll see a set of questions. Um, just the first couple are just about um, who you are and where you work. And uh, if you go to menti.com and type in that code, you'll be able to scroll through these questions and give your answers uh, to the different questions. Uh, and I will, uh, as I go back and forth through these questions, you should be able to move yourself through back and forth, but um, you'll see the, uh, the responses as they come in uh, on the screens. And there are not a lot of folks on the call and hopefully you'll, uh, you'll take a second and uh, give us some responses here. Uh, you'll be able to come back to this. Um, this will remain open throughout the week, actually, the site. And so uh, if you don't want to do it now or it's not working for you for some reason, uh, you can come back and do it. But I see we're getting some responses. <clears throat> nice spread across all the different uh, roles and types of organization. I2B2 users, great. <clears throat> okay, well, I think. Um, we will move on. As I say, you can keep responding to these um, throughout the call and actually throughout the week. Uh, this will remain up through Friday evening. Uh, if you don't have time right now, I'd like to go back and post some questions. Um, thanks. Thanks for your responses. It's great. Yeah, some one new person looking to get uh, involved. Okay, so. Uh, this is the agenda for the day, and um, I'd like to turn it over to our managing director, Diane Keough. Diane? Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, I am here in freezing, freezing uh, Boston, and uh, it was 11 degrees when I walked out of the house today, so um, I'm pleased to be in my warm office. And uh, what I want to do is um, I want to give you uh, an update, a quick update on the foundation. We'll um, talk a little bit about, just a couple minutes about the I2B2 release that's coming out. Um, Rudy will um, say a few words about the, the beta release of Transmart. Um, and then Mike Mendez, who is here in the office with me, will um, talk about two topics, two meaty topics, one about red cap integration um, and one about uh, an update on what's happening with the, the ETL um, working group. And then we'll open it up for discussion. So Rudy, if you wanna to go to the next slide. So the first thing I want to mention is um, 
we had launched a new um, user group for the European community um, last month, and uh, 28 people immediately joined, and that um, that continues to grow. So that's pretty exciting. We had our first call. It was a, a lively call. A lot of um, energetic um, folks on on the the group. Um, and the three areas that we talked about, one is, you know, obviously we're still looking for the uh, a home for the European meeting for the fall. So um, a lot of brainstorming around that. Um, they started to formulate what their priorities were as a, a European community. Um, and then, you know, of course, the desire to make ITB2 and Transmart uh, data models compatible. So those are the three main areas. The, Meeting will be um, the first Tuesday of each month. Um, if you want to join, you can go to the um, working group link on the website and, um, and join the um, user group there. Um, the next month's agenda will be kind of use case um, focused. One will be about disease based registries. Uh, Andreas Kramer will be leading that. And then the second will be the support of the data integration centers. Um, that um, I actually don't know much about. These are things in, in Europe that um, Ulrich Sack will lead. So we'll, um, we will focus on those two areas. Next slide. Again, we need a home for our fall meeting. Um, this is kind of typical with the, with the European meetings. Uh, we, we usually identify the, the location sort of in the, the late winter um, timeframe and then, um, then have to pull the meeting together. Um, I'd love to have a few years queued up, but if, if anybody has a, a suggestion for a, a location, please um, reach out to us. Next slide. So we're going to go back to the, um, the Minty questions, and, and the focus here is about um, working groups. So there was a suggestion made um, by one of our, our new members to uh, create one on artificial intelligence. Um, and I think that could be pretty interesting. So I think we'll we'll start to formulate what that what that is, and 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 see if we um, pull can pull together a group a group of people. But what I wanted to do is I also wanted to ask a few questions using our um, Menti um, software to see if people had suggestions on other um, user groups that they're interested in. So I will let you all go to your your Menti questions and um, see what kind of response we get. Uh, this will remain open so people you know you, you guys can keep adding to this during this session or also uh, during the week as i said so whenever you're ready we could move on diane you know we can come back to this <clears throat> I 
Dan, you ready to move on? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. My okay. <laughs> my phone my phone was on mute. I was actually talking this whole time. <laughs> okay. <Sorry. laughs> That's all right. You gotta you gotta this technology, you know, the mute button. All yeah. right. This is some great information. this is some great information, everyone. So um okay. I think we'll we will take a, a deeper dive at, uh, on some of these things moving forward. All right, Rudy, next slide. Okay, so I'm, I'm actually very, very pleased to announce that we have uh, appointed a new board member uh, to our board of directors, uh, David Dimond from um, uh, Dell EMC. He's the chief innovation officer for uh, Dell uh, EMC for their global healthcare and life science. Um, I have I've known him for a, a number of years, and he's you know very passionate about the life sciences um, area and using uh, platforms and technology to support life science. I think as an organization, Dell is is very much focused in that area, so we're very uh, happy to welcome him to the um, the board. Um, and I think he'll uh, he's got a lot of connections to a lot of people that can um, probably get involved in in some of our working groups and things. So very excited. Um, to, to have him join. So, Rudy, you can go to the next slide. So, the Harvard meeting registration is now open. So, uh, please, please, please um, register. We're um, thrilled to let you know that our sponsors uh, have uh, provided us um, with enough funding. Uh, so, registration this year is free. I think um, last year we, we did have a a small registration fee that um, that was something that wasn't popular, and um, so I'm, I'm I'm thrilled that it's free this year. Um, everyone is invited. We uh, I'll show you sort of the preliminary, the be beginnings of the preliminary agenda. But everybody is invited uh, to offer topics for a presentation, um, you know, use cases or or posters. Um, and there is a place on the website where you can um, you can you put your suggestions in, um, and we will get back to you. We have a a keynote speaker, um, John Wilbanks, uh, who's the Chief Commons Officer at Sage uh, Bio Networks. Um, his talk is uh, share, sharing on a spectrum um, building and ethical uh, data commons. So I think this is going to be um, a really, really interesting um, talk by by John. So next slide. This is what we have posted on the website so far. A sneak preview. Um, we're still pulling together the speakers for this but we we thought uh, a focus on um, national and regional networks um, that are out there and talk about what people have done and um, you know uh, what they're going to be doing moving forward and um, what worked what didn't work that may actually turn into a panel discussion um, so we're focusing on um, red cap integration you're going to hear about that today but i think there's there's additional um, red cap integration um, that people are interested in Certainly some use cases on um, fire, OMOP. Um, user interfaces is something that we've done a, a ton of work on um, over the past year here with the help of um, Griffin Weber and his, his uh, user interface group. Um, panel on data sharing, um, you know, and, and, and again, you can, you can read this. So um, Rudy, you can go to the next slide. The second day is going to be similar to um, what we've done in the past. Um, ACT will have a half day um, session where they can bring a, a lot of the people within the ACT community together um, to focus on their roadmap. Um, the working groups will be able to report out um, on the, in the afternoon. And then we'll have drop in clinics for ITB2 and Transmart so people can come in and ask questions, um, you know, technical questions to, uh, directly to the experts. And maybe some training. So that's. I think it's. I think it's going to be a, a great uh, meeting. So I'm hoping that people will register and we get a, a, a really big turnout this year. Next slide. So um, is Jeff Plan on the the phone? I think he was going to do a quick update on the 1.7.12 release. Jeff, you can just unmute. I think and join. So. Uh, oh, am I? You're okay. Hi. Hey, everyone. So um, as of, I think, December 27th or so, we released I2B2 1.7.12. So this is the first um, conference call where we actually get to announce it, that we've been posting announcements in various places. This was, um, this is anticipated for a while. We, we kind of, we finished the code in October, and we spent 
spent a lot of time making sure it was well tested and and uh, you know supported all the all the use users and use cases it needed to. So we've got it out now. <clears throat> so it looks like um, Rudy put a summary here of the things that we changed. The three biggest things that changed in 1.712, and, and they're actually pretty significant changes. Um, we changed the install of I2B2, so it's now dramatically easier to install both you know, downloading it as a, uh, as a WAR file or installing from source are both much easier. Um, yeah, we also rede redesigned the whole find terms interface in the web client, so it's much easier to find terms. I, I, I know as a user of I2B2, I, I found it difficult to actually find what I was looking for with find terms many times. And, um, and, and now it, it's built around some other uh, work that's been done by like the LEAF team at University of Washington in design. And uh, it, it's much easier to use. It lets you navigate the hierarchy as you're doing search, which uh, is much better. Um, and then the third big thing I'm going to jump down to, it was REDCap import. We now have a direct integration with REDCap, so you can link a REDCap form or survey to your I2B2 project, and the data is kind of continuously integrated back into I2B2. Uh, we also added some other new fun features. Um, I2B2 has had the capacity to uh, keep counts of the total number of facts for every item in the ontology, and that's been true for many years, but there have never been um, tools included to fill in those counts. So we built those kind of uh, on various other projects over the years. So we put them together and optimize them and clean them up and put those into I2B2. Um, we support new authentication protocols um, that <clears throat> weren't supported before. We also made a few other um, enhancements to the web client, fixed a lot of bugs, and we included the ACT ontology from the ACT team. So optionally, when you install I2B2, you can install it with the demo ontology or you can install it with the ACT ontology. So I, maybe next month we can add a Mentimeter question to find out if anyone's actually installed it yet, and if so, what, what, what are the, uh, the best things and the worst things and any problems that need to be addressed. But, um, but right now, just wanted to, to say with excitement that it's actually out there. So go ahead and grab it and give it some testing. Um, another important thing that happened in this release um, <clears throat> is that we included a lot of external collaborators. And this is something that uh, will be a trend. We want to encourage more and more external collaborators to contribute back to the core. And we're trying to f formalize ways of making of contributors making those contributions back to the core. So in, in addition to the uh, team at Partners, um, which included you know four of us plus a couple of other people at Partners who contributed who have been on the I2B2 team in the past, uh, we also had um, the ACT team, we had uh, group to California, Morrow and Pavia. We had the LEAF team at University of Washington, Dan Dianello at WashU. So we, we had a lot of um, important contributions from external collaborators, and we would really like to have more of those in the future. Um, not, not just, you know, not as we've had for many years, we've had external um, pages, you know, community projects and whatnot, but actually to get core features in. Because the, the core team of I2B2 is rather small now, and um, adding new features will be something that we're going to rely on the community in a lot of ways in the future um, for some of the big new features. Uh, so thanks for, for thanks for all the hard work. Thanks for the beta testing. Um, we also had community beta testing and so many many of you out there were beta testing and that was great too. Um, we are, uh, is there another slide or is that it? No, that's, that's it. That's it, okay. We're starting to think about what's gonna go in 13 now. We're just at the early planning stages of that. Um, so if you have in, if you have interest in that discussion, let us know if you have ideas or particular features that you want. Um, we will be developing a 13. Um, we'll also, of course, be soliciting external uh, contributions for 13. Uh, so if you have ideas for what either of those pieces should look like, then definitely let us know. Uh, I think that's all. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Um, also, I'll just uh, keep going. This is Rudy. I chair the Transmart PMC. Um, we are in the final final beta testing uh, of version 19. Uh, Peter uh, has a couple of other um, little things that have cropped up that he's uh, working through uh, and trying to finish up. And so we're hoping to have this 
completed shortly. Um, and anybody, if you have any time, uh, the, the demo uh, is up and running. Uh, you can, uh, it's got some test data and you can give it a whirl. Uh, we're hoping to have this out early in February. Okay. So now let's um, move on to, uh, to REDCap integration. Uh, Mike Mendez is going to take over and uh, give us his presentation on REDCap. Mike, are you there? You yep, I'm here. Great, thanks. Perfect. There you go. Okay. Can you go to the next screen? Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, just a quick thing about REDCap. I mean, it's it's basically it's a web-based application that was built on PHP, JavaScript, and MySQL. Uh, it lives in the DMZ so that the patient uh, who's ever answering any of the REDCap queries would be able to be access would be able to access it. Because typically you submit some type of form and then um, then you recruit some people to answer that, answer that query, similar to how we were doing earlier today. Um, but then all the data gets saved currently into the REDCap application to the MySQL. Um, I mean, it's used by research, uh, researchers, PIs. It was uh, funded by the NIH, and as you can see, there's lots of people using it and lots of institutions and lots of journal articles written about it. So that's a quick <laughs> introduction to REDCap, which I think a lot of people are familiar with. So we can go to the next page. Okay, and this is just a screenshot showing from October 2019, all the institutions using it. As you can see, there's a huge amount in both the US and Europe, and then scattered across uh, Asia and Africa and Australia and stuff. Okay, uh, you can go to the next screen. Okay, so so some of the uses of the red cap, I mean, you can define forms and data, create uh, user access tables, uh, uh, use for capturing uh, data entry, do validation. It stores the data and then also allows you to export the data for analysis. And this is where the uh, transpon ITB2 is going to take advantage of this. Um, you go to the next screen. Okay, so. The REDCap application has an API that allows you to uh, extract data from the REDCap uh, application. So when someone fills out a form, it will send a trigger to something. And this, uh, this thing is uh, which we developed was uh, part of the ITB2 CLC cell. So it sends a trigger to the ITB2 cells and says that this uh, uh, someone has filled out a form. And so ITP2 contacts REDCap and says, okay, here is the ID that you told me, and here is a special key. Actually, if you jump to the next page, I think I, the next one has the key. Uh, I wish there was a thing that shows you like what the next screens were. <laughs> but anyway, so it sends you back a key, and then REDCap is like, okay, that key validates who you are. So here is the data. And so then it sends back all the form data and all the metadata for that uh, form. So then ITB2 will create an ontology based on that metadata and will load in that patient. It will first check to see if that patient exists in the ITB2. And if it does, it will just add as another entry. And if it doesn't, then it will create a patient for you. And so this is how we could use the REDCap uh, query forms with existing EHR data, social media data, genomic data. So it's just adding a way of it's getting more data and how, utilizing it. Okay, so jump to the next screen. And so to integrate REDCap into ITB2, it's basically it's a fairly simple, I guess three steps simple-ish procedure. So if you're familiar with REDCap, you need to generate an API key. And so within the uh, REDCap application, you can create that key. The other thing is you need to associate a project to that key. And so that's where in the um, project params, you specify REDCap survey form and you specify what that, uh, what that REDCap project is. And in this case, I said 14. Uh, and then you also need to specify that key so that when I could be to contact REDCap again, or for the first time, it will pass that API token key. And so that's mainly what needs to be done. You need to also create the forms in REDCap. Um, I guess maybe one of these days we could probably do like a 
actual demo mm -hmm. of it and show show how it's done. Um, but this kind of gives you an idea of what what can be done. The other thing is you need to uh, um, needs to be added to the Ag Service account for the key. The reason we did that was because the API token is kind of a protected key. If you have that, then anyone can access your red cap. So the Ag Service account is kind of a protected account. So uh, we wouldn't be exposed. Okay, so you can jump to the next screen. Okay, and so within the red cap, you need to specify where the ITB2 instance is, um, and then what the path is like uh, query uh, query to setup slash red cap. So you can jump to the next screen. This is also part of the red cap. So. And so once the data gets sent back from oh, from the red cap to ITB2 and gets loaded in, this kind of shows you a quick uh, um, patient mapping. The ma patient mapping table once it got updated, and as you can see, the IDE source says red cap. The patient num is the new patient num, and then the IDE is whatever the uh, patient ID on the red cap side was. So the three that were added was myself, uh, Jay Smith, and T. Thompson, and those three were uh, pa uh, patient IDs within the red cap. Uh, typically, you wouldn't use like identifiable names like Mike Mendes. You'd use some type of number like 127, but this is just for demonstration. Okay, you can jump to the next screen. Okay, great. I guess, I guess I'm on again. <laughs> okay, jump to the ETO. Okay, so give a quick update on the ETL group. I can jump to Okay, so quick uh, rehash of what we've been doing. We have like uh, the active GitHub repository, which is right here. We created a, like, a checklist of uh, um, what things we, we should do, with, which is in our documentation. And then we did some validation scripts. And now this is where we're kind of extending the validation scripts uh, into the future. And um, we also did like some act ontology and children nums, which got migrated into the 1712 release. Yeah, 1712. Um, so some of the work that was done by ETL group got migrated into the, uh, the release plant branch of ITP2. Uh, you can jump to the next page. So um, this is just a kind of a quick rehash of, uh, you probably, if you've seen this slide before, this is kind of like some of the, tools that were used by Transpot. We also, on the Transpot website, we've started to modify some of the, uh, um, I think we created a grid of all the different versions of Transpot and what tools are available for those versions. What, so what's available for 16, what's available for, for 17, and um, now we're gonna be working on what's available for 19. So, so some of these got integrated into that website website. Okay, you can jump to the next page. Okay, so um, one of the things that we started looking at was we need, we, we were developing um, a bunch of stored procedures to load data into uh, transmod slash ITB2. And we were looking at ways of executing these stored procedures. And so it was kind of a, we started looking at this SSIS, but there was a lot of licensing requirements if you're not um, a Microsoft shop. So then um, we started looking at paper, and then we've had a lot of good uh, talks on paper, a lot of presentations on the ETL group. Um, so we started to look at utilizing papers to actually execute all these stored procedures. And so the stored procedures, uh, and then we started looking at using some type of EHR system. I think it's just, can you jump to the next page? This next page has that. Um, yeah, so so we started looking at utilizing some type of EHR system as kind of a guinea pig, if you think, uh, for loading the data. And um, we know that Epic is like one of the more popular ones, but releasing stuff based on Epic can only do it on their site. So we, we started looking at NextGen, which is also a very popular EHR system. So we've developed uh, tools or store procedure scripts that will take next gen and then load it into OMOP. And so, th and then after that, we 
have another set of tools that take OMOD and put it into ICB2 or OMOD into Transmod. Um, the reason why we chose OMOD versus just saying next gen to ICB2 is because we wanted some uh, middle layer that could be used by other EHR systems. So we'll do practice patients next, uh, all scripts or some other one. And then all they have to do is take their EHR and bring it into OMOS. And then from then on, they can use the pre-existing OMOS to ITV2 to get into ITV2 or OMOS to IT, or Transmon to get into Transmon. And so we've, um, I think this was done a few months ago, but there was this, Here's a GitHub repository for that look for that next gen to Elmos. Uh, can you jump to the next page? And so this is just uh, so instead of using papers, there's another you can also use the Azure uh, Data Factory. So this kind of shows using not just paper because if you're not familiar with papers or don't want to use papers, you don't have to use papers. You can use SSIS or you can use Azure. Uh, can you jump to the next page? Um, and so, yeah, so that's kind of a quick what we've been working on. Um, if anyone has anything besides, uh, like an all script or practice patients or an epic that want to work on getting that into OMOT, we can publish that with you. Uh, except the epic, we'll have to figure out how to post it on the epic site. But then we'll link to it and say, for the epic version, go here. Uh, and then, so we meet on the first Tuesday from 10 to 11, this is Eastern time. Here are the numbers. Uh, anyone wants to join, um, there's a link on the website, on the Transmont website to join, or just email me and I can get you joined. Or well, email Diane, one of the two. And I think so that's my update. I assume that's the last page. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Any questions? Oh, are we waiting for questions at the end? Okay. Yeah, we're at the we're at the this, the question oh, okay. section. Okay, so um, here are a few uh, questions that have come in, and uh, anyone can go uh, on the back to the menti .com and type in a question. Mike, since you've been on most recently, you want to, can you address the last Yeah, I was just question about red cap? So, no. Okay. Yeah, so, so the reason why we did a red cap, uh, which is a pseudo open source platform. I know what you mean by it's not open source. Um, you have to be an institution in order to get the source code and look at it and to use it. Uh, a lot of institutions were using it. It was kind of uh, a first step of trying to, look at integrating these other systems. I'm definitely interested in Open Clinica and other things. Uh, if anyone wants to, I'm not that familiar with Open Clinica, but if someone is and wants to work with me and um, integrate it in ICB2 transplant, definitely interested. I mean, uh, there was, it's not like this one is the only one. The more the systems that we can get integrated, um, the better. Uh, so yeah, so I think um, I think yeah, uh, the way to put my email address. Oh, no. well, Let's just put I, it in as a question, Mike. Oh, okay. That's right. If you if you have the if you have the menti com there. Oh, I have to go there. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Also, I think that um, regarding the the ETL um, working group. Um, I, I think we're going to need like a, probably a couple hour session at the June meeting. I think there's there's definitely a lot of interest in that um, and hearing that. Um, okay, so somebody somebody is. Yeah, I yeah the located uh, okay. Yeah, so so talking talking to this Cal Collins guy from Open Clinic, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. What, what do I answer? Oh, I think it was the end. All right, Mike, I'll let you do that. <laughs> All right, friends of Keith.
Okay, good. Um, so I can talk about the board um, members. So, it, you know, it is true that um, a number of the uh, board members are from Harvard. Um, we recognize that. We've recognized that for a while, and the board is, is trying to really focus on diversity, um, making sure that we're pulling people in from different industries. Um, I mean, that's one of the reasons Dave Diamond um, is, is part of the board now. Um, we want to we wanna look at um, bringing in more women to the board. I mean, at this point, we only have one um, female board member. Um, we're also really interested in um, the European community, making sure that we're representing the European community. Oh, there's Mike's yeah. email. Um, we will have a board. Um, we, we will uh, allow uh, board nominations in the spring. Um, Right now, we're um, we're it, the people that will nominate the board members are member uh, members of the foundation. Um, we may be taking a look at that uh, and seeing if we make some changes. There is a link to the bylaws, the current bylaws, on the the website. Any other questions from anyone? And you can type it into the um, the board here. Uh, if you'd rather just turn on, unmute yourself and ask it on the phone, you can, you're welcome to do that as well. One of the advantages of using Zoom instead of go to, go to webinar. As I mentioned, uh, this board, uh, this Menti board will stay up uh for and through friday uh and then the results will be collected into the slide deck that we post uh, on the website uh for this meeting uh, along with the recording and these should all be up uh online by the end of the week i'm not seeing anything else come in diane you want to do a close <clears throat> yeah, great. Thank, thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, I, I have a feeling we may have lost a few people because of the, the Zoom, um, the change to Zoom. So we'll, we'll definitely um, uh, send that out to folks um, and, and make sure people are aware. Uh, and remember, this uh, presentation is um, will be available on the website and it's always recorded. So you can go back to this. Um, so thank you very much for joining and we will talk to you in February.